Hello everyone, back if it's near the expected. Rain, er, we're back to the lobster roll week three. But it loses round two, not loses quarterfinals, because this is going to go on for a little while, so I might as well watch it. Madcraft and Bloa go at it before the winner of them fights Steel Blue. Because why not watch it? I apologize, there's not going to be game sound for a sec. Anyway, Bandit Planes again! And, oh, okay, very quick start. Cloaky v Cloaky. And Madcraft going hard on that, on the overdrive setup. Alright, there we go, there's game sound. Madcraft also going hard on the, on the rating. Well, got rid of three metal extractors off the bat. Not bad there, putting Madcraft ahead quite a bit in terms of economy. And also putting Madcraft in a great position to take control of the map. I mean, already they got a Conjurer over on the side. Escorted by two Glaives, I love seeing that. Going over on the side because... Well, escorting I like seeing because, of course, you know, Conjurers don't deal damage, so it's good to have an escort. Same time, there's some raiding coming in. More raiding, but Madcraft kind of did their job. I and mean, they got rid of, they got the raiding done that got rid of the metal extractors over here, which have not been rebuilt, despite the conjurer being literally a few meters away, like 10 meters, 20 meters away. Like it's actually no, that's not true. How big are these? I don't even know how big these units are, honestly. I've never understood the scale. Like a lot of them are as big as trees, so that could be as many as like several hundred meters away. Actually, considering the range, it probably is more like a few hundred meters away, but it's it's right there on the map. It's it's right there. That's my point. Distance is not well measured here. I mean, I guess I could measure in Elmos, but screw it. I know what I mean. That a conjure right here could have been rebuilding the entire time. So Madcraft's raiding has been way more effective than I'm sure they even hoped. Granted, now Madcraft has to be a little careful. They are... They're going to deal with having some units come in here from Bloa. Trying to figure out whether or not... Uh, it looks like Madcraft is trying to go for an assault along the main base. Or not main base, on the middle. Along the main line. Bloa, on the other hand, going for a counter raid. Two Lotuses and three Glaives is not going to be enough to deal with a dozen Glaives coming at them. Well, okay, eight Glaives might be... Fine. Well, three lotuses that could work. Bit of a tight, tight call, but at the same time, it is a tight fit. And it looks like Bloa decides that they are not going to go for. They don't want to throw their glaives away for nothing. Smart choice, but at the same time, it means Madcraft will. And I mean, it's a smart choice. It wouldn't have worked either way. Madcraft will still be able to build behind that. While, at the same time, there's really this discrepancy in terms of territory control that's getting clean... It's getting tightened up more and more. Madcraft had been expanding a bit, but... Oh, did they lose? No, they're conjures right here. No longer being escorted, but right here. A little distracted. I would... I could almost see having a second conjurer there to help build. And indeed, another one is coming along. To help build in the back lines. Unfortunately, it is not escorted by Glaives. That was a really good thing to do, Madcraft. We think it's good to keep doing that. That's You never know whether or not units are going to be getting in the way. Having Glaives in the middle of likely expansion points is just a smart tactic that a lot of players will do. And putting escorts with your workers is the way to counter that. But of course, it requires that you do that. So it makes the front line less, less well defended. And that's... Still, it's still useful either way, but the point is that it's better to have a slightly less dependent front line than to have a dead constructor. So these, this glaive could be close enough to not be a problem. At the same time, though, Madcraft is assaulting the main base. Ooh, the construct... Oh, the conjurer goes by the glaive and does spot the glaive. But at the very least, there are some glaives close enough. More importantly, though, the front line is getting wrecked Blow is going to have to jump away from with their commander. This set of Ravagers... Or sorry, the Reavers now are there. Not Ravagers. Yeah. Set of Reavers coming in here is going to be 
absolutely devastating if that commander lets them get in range. Knight trying to come in to help out. Ooh, does start getting some hits. And Blow wisely jumps away, but the center has been lost. Madcraft able to just... Well, stop that part of the economic advantage, but there's still actually a stronger economy on Blow's end for static economy than there is for Madcraft. And having lost their Conjurer, Madcraft has no real way of rebuilding that. Again, Madcraft had the right idea in the first place, but this is still kind of risky. Fortunately, though, Madcraft was able to micro out with their Glaives. Beating up Blow is allowing them to secure the Northeast once again, and yet another Conjurer coming in here to finish things off. But more importantly, Madcraft's commander up front, securing all this reclaim, has a caretaker right there, both for repair and for reclaim. So Madcraft will be able to make up for any economic losses, or any economic de deficits between them and Bloa. Same time of night, went in a little bit too far, providing some reclaim metal donation. And yeah, overall, it's just kind of it's really hard to say that a whole lot's going right. It feels like there's a lot of things that are just missing, and a lot of rebuilds that aren't happening, a lot of construction that is happening, but then... Is there another Conjurer here to help reclaim? No. Everything's going into the Stinger. And Madcraft just doesn't have enough metal for all three. Like, they need to reclaim if they want that Stinger to be built a reasonable amount of time, and indeed they're doing so. But then, well, here comes the... Here come the Reavers. Here comes the main assault force over to the eastern side of the map. Blowa does not want to let Madcraft have this. And it's worth noting, Madcraft has not taken this area here. Neither has Blowa, mind you, but Blowa has taken the eastern equivalent. Hence, Blowa's economic advantage. And Madcraft just starting to lose the attrition war as well. Although, I can't point out there that yeah, Blowa's entire energy economy is contingent on this hill worth of shield of wind generators but sadly Madcraft doesn't have a sparrow or something to actually go and check it so they can't stop that they don't know that there is something to stop does Madcraft have radar yes they have radar but they haven't thought to build another radar tower to turn to a sparrow to just double check their opponent's base because right now I don't think Madcraft is aware no they have no idea there's a wind generator farm over in the hill So that's the thing, that, that Madcraft, if they had an opportunity to deal with, or to strike a blow against Blow's economy, they absolutely could if they were scouting, which players never do in this game. That's why Sparrows exist. Oh, I see. <laughs> Crazy Eddie in the chat. This, oh, is that the official rules skeleton exist, hence Elmo's, but then they like to assume everything is tabletop scale in inches. With glaze the size of orcs and reavers of space marines, considering from if you're playing Warhammer 40k. And I mean, I can see that relative scale. Okay, I can kind of see the relative scale, except if I'm not mistaken, orcs have a fairly big size variation. But I'm assuming they're talking about shooter boys. More importantly, though. Over the eastern side of the map, multiple space marines, I mean, reavers, are coming over and tearing apart all these metal extractors, bullying out Madcraft's attempts to expand, and honestly, bullying out Madcraft's attempts to get their economy even. Madcraft also not really having a whole lot they can work with. Unfortunately, Bloa has been forcing Madcraft to really divide their attention, and Madcraft, I mean, they just don't have the forces concentrated at any one spot to actually break through any of Bloa's defenses, or really to deal with any of Bloa's assault forces. Like, it's hard to tell from the attrition, but a better way of looking at it is this. Army value, Bloa is ahead by 3,500 metal. This entire army. No, twice that army. It, that... Like, if we take this army and double it, that is the amount of army that Bloa has that Madcraft does not. Which is significant. That is massively significant. The, the, just, actually, we're seeing the same kind of play as Madcraft as well, with the three cloaky plates and the proxy shield factory. 
and it doesn't seem to be working out super well. I mean, the shield factor is working out okay in the center, but again, Bloa is taking the flank so well that it just doesn't matter. And again, like, the flanking armies are free. Madcraft does not have a response to it by the numbers. So yeah, the center is getting attacked a fair bit, but Madcraft needs to have 3,000 bonus or 3,000 extra on attrition if they want to have any shot at getting through Blow's army. And that's not something they really seem to have the composition for. I mean, Mass Glaive, no. Mass, Mass Ronin, sure, that would work. But then again, it's also like, how are you going to split everything there? I'm not even sure that this Stardust is going to work. I, the Ronin will take out the Stardust. It's no problem whatsoever. I mean, the center is being damaged, and actually Madcraft's... No, Madcraft's still behind 600 metal on attrition. And, of course, all this time, Bloa continues to increase their army lead. Oops. And now it's 6,000 metal. <laughs> Bloa has to kill an army twice their size without losing really any units. And admittedly, against these Ronin, that's actually working out reasonably okay. So that's, that's something. That's... You know, 700 metal. That's not much. That's the thing with Cloakbots, is, like, 6,000 metal is, like, three or four whole armies, basically. And we got one over here. We got one ramping themselves up here. We got that stuff up here as well. So, yeah, that's, that's 6,000 between the two of them. And that's the advantage. So, Madcraft... I mean, maybe they concentrated the forces to wipe out the western flank and then turn the center. I mean, the center is holding reasonably well. Although, with the eastern flank force coming in from Bloa, that center is not going to hold for much longer. Also, Madcraft turning a bunch of their resources into commander power, which is not going to help for army value unless the commander is able to get a, like I said, three or 4,000 attrition on its own. And with the Phantom hanging out there, I don't see that happening. I, I, I'm just, I'm really doubtful that Madcraft's going to be able to duel that much. I mean, at least the Phantom is getting distracted, but again, Madcraft's commander is honestly kind of wasting his efforts. One more Phantom shot should do it? Yeah, the shield is just up. It's not even, oh no, 1250, but that's no, not enough. Phantom steel, 1500? Yeah, this goes straight, straight through the shield. Does not even matter. And with that... Loa just continues to press that advantage. Honestly, I would say for Madcraft, the thing that they kind of missing is even the early raids. Like, okay, scouting? Seriously. Sparrows exist. They're not that expensive. You build a radar, basically for a Sparrows, 200 metal. It saves you a ton of pain trying to figure out what the heck your opponent's up to. But secondly, Glaives have hard counters. They'll Reaver's basically hard counter glaives, and you can't just send a handful of glaives around the map to do stuff. Not in the mid-game. In the first minute or two, yes. After that, I don't know, a half a dozen glaives. After about five minutes or so, you've got to bring out heavier guns. Like, half a dozen glaives going around the map, there's going to be too much in the way of defenses. And, I mean, Cloakie is just tough that way. What you can do is take advantage of Conjurer's Area Cloak. And use that in order to, and especially with the amount of energy Madcraft has, you can take the Conjurer's Area Cloak, use that to bring a bunch of Reavers right up to an area, and then rip apart everything. Like, even two or three Reavers can wipe out a few Lotuses if they can get in range before the Lotuses hit them. You do that, and you force your opponent to be a little more paranoid. Start taking out some of their stuff. It's too late now, but I mean, like, the five, five to ten minute, between the five to ten minute range, that would have been the way to go. Not to mention upgrading your commander that much. Not worth it, especially when it goes and dies like that. So yeah, that was that was kind of that. But overall, no, it's just you gotta get up heavier guns. Even for raiding, you gotta get up heavier guns. There's just so much that you have to fight against that Glaives cannot deal with more than a one, maybe two lotuses in an area. Any more than that, the Glaives get ripped to shreds. So, I don't know, I'm curious what Madcraft's experience is, and I really hope to see them in future tournaments. Because, I mean, hey, they, they went 2-2. Two and two. Like, credit where it's due, they actually did quite well. Well, 
Like they beat Jim they beat Jimish 3D, they beat RTW Fruity. They lost to Stewart and Bloa. That's that's a good performance. That's that is a strong performance. I really hope to see Madcraft in future. I just think that there's there's stuff they can work on as far as understanding the way that the flow of the game goes and the progress of the factory. With Cloakbot, it's really tricky because you kind of got to get into Knights and Phantoms, or you got to get into Area Cloak, like Area Cloak into weird cloak pushes, which are hard to do in a map this size, to be honest. But they might work. I mean, the hard to defending is in a map this size too. But yeah, you need a lot of scouting as well, or you need to factory switch. Like Cloaky on its own, its late game is tricky. It's built around, like, as in, it's built around tricks. It's built around being tricksy and making your opponent not entirely sure what they need to do to fight against you. Now, I get the shield switch coming out later, because that is a much more late game oriented factory where you just ball up and go. But it, that wasn't transitioned into until a fair bit later. Whereas the cloak bots, no, that's something you, you can do late game with cloak bots. You just have to. It just requires a lot more cleverness than just pushing units in. Or a lot more cleverness in the late game than it does in the early game. That's really what it comes down to. And that, that can be tricky to get up to. That can be tricky to get used to as an idea about how clever you have to be. But yeah, that is at least all I can say as far as advice. I mean, hopefully Madcraft is able to practice and figure out other holes in their play that I might be missing and also, you know, work on transitioning into the mid to late game. And I expect we'll be seeing some better performance later on. Oh, wow. Bloa is just hanging out with 2,000 metal worth of units. Not even... Like, they can come down any time. I think they're just trying to set up a big, powerful flank from the back. Just go in. It's not like Madcraft isn't aware of this. Madcraft's absolutely aware of this. Or they should be. Oh, no, they're not! They had no idea the radar tower was a bit too low. This is the first they realized that was a thing. Oh, that's gotta suck. Yeah, this is it. Madcraft hit on all sides. There is no way out. No way to rebuild. And their units are desperately trying to defend, but it's not happening. That Stinger doing its best, and it's not going to work. So yeah, that is that. Madcraft, good job going 2-2. Two two. Bloa moves on to fighting a Steel Blue in the Losers' quarterfinals. Winner of which will fight Stewart 98 in the loser semifinals. And we will be getting back to that. I think I'll take a short break. I'll, I'll let this let this video be on its own and then take a short break. So yeah, stay tuned. We'll be back with the losers quarterfinals once that match is set up. <laughs> 